take two for Corey. Almost lost the black again there. Dry break though. You can't afford dry breaks at this level. Scott just moves that one difficult ball that he had. Now makes it uh, possible to the right middle. set up for the TV matches here the way we've been able to set the cameras up is cover both tables so if one does get a bit boring then we can switch to the other one and likewise if you haven't seen it before we've got the got the inset view which allows you to see both tables at the same time with the miscue that he had. in there to develop that other yellow. Black is still in a, a bit of a tied up position on the right hand side to work a little bit harder to move that ball out. Taking this other slightly tricky yellow on the uh, right hand side here. It's just off the cushion so it couldn't, shouldn't cause him too much of a hassle. Just whilst he's wandering around the table I'll just put the inset back on again because Scott Gillespie is on the finish. Looks like he's just over run position on that one. But he does put Scot uh, Scotland 1 0 up.
tough little tester, this one. Great position. Good finish. Mark Bowen then. Level in score. You see Gavin Phillips' break there up against uh, Andy McDonald, Andy's first appearance for the Welsh national side at Black Ball. played each other in the quarterfinals of the singles, these two. Gavin Phillips and Andy. Obviously, Gavin winning that one. 9-5, I think the scoreline was. A good win last night against Christoph Terbo as well, 10-8. So go through to the final where he'll meet... Jimmy Carney also won 10-8 last night. Switch back to the other table here because Alan Reynolds on a finish for Team Scotland. Just one yellow and the black to go. I have to use the red ball on the cushion here to slow the white ball down. So he's left this a little bit thinner than he would have wanted, so hold for the black to the middle. I better just drag it in. Going at this off one rail. Well, no contact with the black. End up hitting it the wrong side of the black to try and pot it into the middle bag. Leaves Phil Hoskins with a chance. to top table urgently please if he's not here can someone ring him and get him down here to top table immediately thank you obviously feels that that goes to the middle end does Gavin he can drop the uh, yellow in and there's no real problem with being on the black just need to make sure the cue ball runs past the red ball wow Gavin missed yellow to the middle end And Reynolds got another shot at the black ball here. Let's see what he can do off the rail this time. Made contact with the black last time. Wants to get closer to that potting angle if he can doesn't hit it. Two shots then to Phil Hoskins. You see Phil clear up from there. And likewise now Andy McDonald here for Wales.
Wow, that's unbelievable. Oh, that's missed. Those tap-ins. Leaves Alan Reynolds with that chance on the black. He's not going to take two looks at that. Scotland back in front then. Two frames to one early doors, of course. 25 frames to be played. All frames played in these group stage matches. That's Andy McDonald then on turn number two. Just have to roll that one through. Possibly a little bit too hard, but he should be okay to roll this in. There's no major hassle here. Just get down, knock this black ball in, level it up to two each, which he does. switching because you've got Jordan Shepherd now on the the other TV table here lost in the semi-final to Jimmy Carney last night 10-8 great semi-final one of the best matches we've shown this week so far that one very high quality uh, semi-final Plenty of people watching that match as well, judging by the number of text messages I received. I don't think we're going to see particularly short work here. And have a referee to table number 13, please. Referee to table number 13. The yellow next to the black goes to the bottom left. Might actually go to the top left as well. We can drop in behind it. I think that's what he's just looked at. Obviously does. So this yellow to top left. And then the black ball will go to the middle. And Jordan Sheppard will have put Wales in front. For the first time in this group match, that's the first set complete. And it's Wales that have gone ahead three frames to two. Richard Tang then. the one to the corner his opponent this time Andy McDonald won't uh, get to the table here if Alan takes these the right way take the one down the rail now an opportunity to drop in behind it if he takes the one to the left corner so this will be the one but he's played that very well very well indeed I'm just going to switch to inset again because Richard Tang is also on the finish you just see in the bottom of your screen just put in the yellow into the middle bag as Alan Reynolds does the same thing to the corner back. Trouble with Richard Tang's one in the bottom of your screen. Don't think it goes to the corner. 
both players up for the middle both players finish almost simultaneously and just puts one to the score of either team so the same deficit but now 4-3 to Team Wales Lucky there, did Richard Tang with trying to move that bottom uh, yellow. Ended up nudging it across the cushion rather than uh, the red moving out. It would have been able to play it into the corner bag if the red moved. come across that and straight up off the shot knew he'd missed it straight away trying to nudge what could prove to have been a tricky red there
Pete Smith pulled it level on the other table. Forgot to show you the conclusion of that frame, sorry about that. I'm trying to uh, deal with some technical issues for some people as well at the same time as commentating and, and dealing with the live stream. I've never believed that men can't multitask. These don't look like a dead set plant, so I think he's been using the yellow here to make this a slightly bigger pocket. finish ideal here good recovery though round the back show you Pat Holtz's break here on table two before we go to the conclusion of Gavin's frame Once again, get interrupted. Sorry about that. One of the tournament organisers there coming up and speaking to me about the the rest of the day's action, really. Wow. Pat just missed one to the corner, into the jaw again. And spitting it out. Corey Reese. one of the talented youngsters coming through the Welsh system. seems to be a very much a, a Welsh style generally just talking to Corey after Jordan Shepherd's game last night as well and it's just Corey just said to me yeah but the way Sheppy plays is just the Welsh mentality and to a degree I think Corey's right I mean you look at the players they've created over the last 10 years Ben Davis Simon Ward Craig Marsh all with a similar mentality on a pool table that attack seems to be the best form of defence and there's plenty of others out there as well it's a good clearance he's played these very very well indeed Corey has 
And this will be to level this back up for Wales then at five apiece. And ten frames gone as we go back across to see, see Gavin Phillips breaking in the corner of your picture. Just to keep you up to date with that table as well. As Richard Tang has nudged the red away from the corner bag to play this yellow in here now. Dry break for Gavin. But Richard Tang on this finish. for the top left corner for this yellow I thought originally he might have played this into the right middle wipes his feet but did find inertia and drop into the pocket Had the crack and monster break there from Corey Reese. I'm just going to stay with this as uh, Mark Bowen tries to take these two remaining balls out a little bit closer to the black than he would have liked, but he's not finished on top of it, so he should be able to run this into the corner. And if he does pop this black, then it would be Wales in front by two racks for the first time in the match as well. Yeah, lovely control, nicely played. Jordan Shepard just broken on the second table as well also looking to take out a dish as long as they get a decent split on the balls these two young Welsh players just do not look like missing at the moment not sure what happened oh wow I say that and he's miscued 
Well, he's managed to cover the bag. Pete Smith just coming to the table with a little bit of a wry smile on his lips. I'm going to move across to Jordan's table as he plays his first shot in open play from the break. The red to the right middle. Play the yellow in as well at the same time. I think that's an open table for Jordan here. Gray shot as he left himself the black though he's left a shot at it hell of a finish again from Jordan Shepherd. three in front now Wales eight frames to five Scott Gillespie just breaking on the inset picture there that's why I've switched across that try and give you a flavour of what's going on on each table at each time it's a good job they're only running on two because I've run out of cameras otherwise that's unlucky that is Pete Smith a great effort to play that to the middle but he's left Corey a chance of this black to the middle a little bit of time to think it through
just overrun that by about three, four inches there Andy McDonald Scotland change it up bringing Stuart Weeks in to play this next frame against Corey Rees again Stuart that's won the the lag so we'll break that's a great recovery that is from Andy McDonald it's back in shape now because this yellow rolls to the middle on the outside jaw the middle back shot there from Scott Gillespie he's got a good chance here to try and get one back on the board for Scotland just runs through almost too far there almost jawed himself taking these very well apart from he's not 100% happy with the position he's given himself on the black ball here really do have to be precise playing this sort of shot down the rail there you go again see just touched cushion on the way I mean he's okay because he's covered the, the corner bag there for Andy going on on the other table at the moment so I'm sticking with this one Stuart Weeks and believe it or not Corey Reese getting into a little bit of a tactical battle there I reckon he must have woken up on the wrong side of the bed or something good safety every opportunity for Scott to hit the black he's just got the angle wrong just two shots then to Andy McDonald here should see him win this frame for Wales which would put them five in front and into double figures of course that wasn't the greatest shot ever either world rules play you see Andy McDonald predominantly not used to taking a free shot if he's got a gap he can still play this uh, yellow to the bottom right
Scott should just be able to play this black with a little bit of swerve if you can't see the left hand edge of it anyway have to say it's uh, for, for a player of Andy's class that's poor not to finish those from where they were with two shots yeah just a little bit of swerve for Scott Gillespie Pulls another one back for Scotland then, 9-6. The yellow, of course. Now just needs to be a little bit careful with the white ball here. Can't play the one to right corner, so it's going to have to play the one to the left corner, which is a little bit of a thinner cut. I'm hoping that one of these two reds can slow the cue ball down. It's got a choice of two. I think natural angle is going to take it to the right hand red here. Wow. I, you know, I don't think about it. I didn't think he was able to extend the angle like that much. He's played that with sides. It's a good shot. Played that with a, a lot of left hand side to extend the cue ball's angle. Shot snooker himself again. the spider rest to reach over the table here whatever happens here you can safely say that Corey is going to look to pop this black no value in trying to just roll up and hit it you may as well hit it a little bit firmer and hope the black ball goes close, close to the pocket I always feel that playing this sort of shot it's best to come off two rails and just the one so top rail side rail and then the black into the corner what well, he's got, not quite got the angle, but he's tied up the black, so it's worked out as a, a double edged sword there, really, for Corey Reese. Checking here where he can finish with the cue ball. He's just off straight. So the cue will be running off the left hand side rail here. Sops it through. Good little shot. Landed exactly where he pointed his cue. Now doing the same thing here to try and gain position on this black to the centre. Keeping it nice and simple, just letting the cue ball do the work. And that levels the match up then at nine frames apiece.
Matt Holt's just trying to frustrate Andy a little bit and try and gain two shots again to clear his last remaining yellow at the top of the table. He's done it for him. Move the reds now. So Pat should be able to go game here. Kevin Burns, top table, please. Kevin Burns, come to top table, please. Opens that ball up, opens the pocket up. Pat Holtz really should be putting Scotland in front here. Or Rollins from here. So from 9-5 down, they're now 10-9 in front. It's a good, solid last five racks from Scotland. At the other table, Pete did raise his hand up to Andy, so he's obviously got a little bit of luck somewhere. Have to take the one to the middle because he can't run the cue ball off the side to play. Because of the cluster of three reds, so this one the corner there will be two frames on the trot for Pete Smith but more importantly six on the bounce for Scotland here good black 11-9 now play the one at the top of the table first actually into the corner they don't have to worry too much about dropping on the other red. Overcut that. Wow, this is to put Scotland on the hill. Snatched at it, pushed it into the jaw, and Renzi gets a reprieve. 12.
Referee to table 43. Craig Marsh watching this from home, of course, was supposed to be here he's representing Team Wales. If he had any hair, he'd be tearing it out. He's off to watch Jeremy Kyle instead, said he's had enough of this. switch across because uh, Scott Gillespie has managed to get himself on a finish here dual screen it again I think because you've got Pat at the bottom right of your picture at the moment as well also on the finish for Scotland so both these players looking to get over that winning line for Scotland here but uh, Pat does have this black to the corner which he rolls in nicely and that's it gives Scotland the win Third. just drop this black to the middle and does restore a little bit of pride for Wales here Mark Bowen make this 13-10 uh, Corey goes in off just these last two frames and remaining in this session and then the next session is due to start at 12.30 you need to find out what's uh, going to be on the featured tables
Williams, switch across to Alan Reynolds. Sorry, away from Alan Reynolds, across to Phil Hoskins for Wales, who is at the table. On the finish. Had the break as well in this frame. It's just not gone well for Wales from they led uh, what 9 5 up they were. Had a chance to go 10 5, and then from that point, it's all been Scotland's traffic really. Playing it that way, I'm not sure what yellow is trying to leave himself on there. Whether he's hoping that yellow would come across into the gap. I mean, it's, you can see the left hand edge of the ball that he's, as he's looking at it. But certainly not the potting angle. bad safety just going to switch across because Alan Reynolds is now on the finish for Scotland again on this table yellow and black to go to put them further in front lose himself a longer black Roll this in, cue it nicely, straight through the white ball. Never in doubt that. 14 10 it is then, just this final frame between Phil Hoskins and Stuart Weeks now to complete this match. Good shot. Good shot. Shame if he's not on anything here.
Not sure who that was texting in there saying Scotland are going to win the team event. You can put your house on it. Thank you for the message. Someone else also saying, you know, they're missing uh, Scott Ross. And Mark Boyle. And, of course, Jason Shaw, if he ever decides to turn his hand to black ball again as well. Three very, very decent players that have performed for Scotland over the last five years. And that would only strengthen the side that they've already got. But I was saying on paper at the beginning of this match, I felt that the Welsh side was stronger. Obviously left himself to pop this into the middle. So can Scotland get a 15-10 win here? Big, big win. They certainly can. It's a great win, that is, for Scotland. 15-10 from 9-5 down. And march on.